Mac Tech Legion, and we'll be taking a look at the Intel DZ77GA70K Extreme Series motherboard. This motherboard is LGA1155 for the socket. It is their Series 7 chipset, Z77 chipset. It is optimized for the K series processors. And there are a couple new refinements on here. We have the Intel Smart Response, which you saw on the Z68, but they refined that. You also have Lucid Virtue on this, which they've refined also. It does have USB, a USB 3.0 front panel module for it. And it does have a Bluetooth connector. Bluetooth and Wi-Fi connector. We'll see that in a few minutes. One good thing about this board is Intel has gone to a UEFI. The BIOS are now UEFI. They're very easy to use and when, I, when you see the full review on our website we will be doing a BIOS video to show the new BIOS for this board. The back of the box shows you the motherboard, what the different components on the motherboard are. Of course, Virtue, as I said, it is SLI and Crossfire capable. This is the back plate and, of course, the Bluetooth. And there is a picture here of what the UEFI BIOS look like. They're calling them visual BIOS. So let's go ahead, open the box, take out the motherboard, and take a look at this motherboard. Okay. As we can see, something very familiar with the Intel motherboards is the skull on the motherboard. Intel has come a long way with the way that they're laying out their boards and the way that they're using their heat sinks. Their heat sinks are anodized now, they're very dense, and they're actually something that you're going to want to see on a system, especially if you're overclocking. There were times where Intel was putting very thin anodized aluminum that really the heat sinks were, as I would say, not that beefy and something that I was afraid to really tweak with. But with these new heat sinks over the PCH, over the, over the uh, VRM and the, and the uh, PWM, you have no problems. It dissipates heat very well. You're not going to have a problem with these boards anymore. Of course, you're going to have four DIMM slots here, 32 gigs, DDR3 memory. Fan header up on top, also another fan header, and you can plainly see the 8-pin power connector. One thing that I like that Intel still does that a lot of motherboard manufacturers don't do is put a speaker on the motherboard so you can hear that CMOS beep so you know that your system is booting up or if you're having an error or anything like that. That I do like, I still like that, and I wish that other manufacturers would start putting that back on their boards again. This has a 24-pin power connector. Underneath that is the power button and reset button. Of course, you have your Intel SATA connectors, native SATA 6, and there are SATA 3 connectors here, 2, 4, 6, 8 total. You have 4 uh, SATA 6 and 4 SATA 3s. This is also USB 3.0 native now. There's no need for an extra Asmedia chip or a Marvel chip or an NEC chip. So it is everything is native Intel now with this new chipset. Down on the bottom here we see that we have a debug. Down here are all our front panel connectors, USB 3.0, etc. When we come over, we can see that we have a PCIe X4 slot, regular P two PCI slots, two PCIe 16 slots, two PCIe X1 slots. Turning the board a little bit more, we can see our back plate here. Now, 
This is a 10 channel audio with an optical. This here is HDMI. This is so you could use the Lucid Virtue or you could use the onboard video on the processor itself. Lucid Virtue is very good. I find that, now that's something that I've used. I might not have used it for gaming or anything like that, but for power saving, it's great. Now, with the new Virtue, there's going to be an offload for shaders, etc., to the, to the new Ivy Bridge processor. Uh, we could get that a little bit more into that involved when you actually read the review on this uh, motherboard, but basically, Virtue is now going to kind of give you a little bit of help, your graphics card a little bit more beef by maybe offloading a little bit of the non-essential stuff like maybe some shader models, etc. to the onboard video so you can increase your frames per second by using Virtue. The other good thing about Virtue is you plug in your monitor to not only your discrete card but into this HDMI. When you're, on a, when you're at idle, it will actually switch over to the onboard so you'll, you'll consume less power. We also have the dual Intel LAN. Intel makes one of the best LANs on the market. Some manu motherboard manufacturers are using, other motherboard manufacturers are using the Intel LAN because it is that good. We have, as I said, native USB 3.0 now. There are quite a few of them. We also have USB 2, which is good. They do, do still give you the USB 2 slots. And of course, you have a PS2 mouse connector. But let's take a closer look at these heat sinks. These are nothing like what they used to be. They're on there, they're braced very well in the back, as you can see. They come through, they're, they're sturdy, they're tight, and they will disperse a lot of heat. The board also is very sturdy. That board's not bending. I could hold it from the corner, it's not going to bend. And of course, the back of the board, as you can see, we have our socket, our socket plate. Now, with this board, you're also going to get some accessories. And that will include, as I was saying before, it will include a USB 3.0 plate for your front panel header, which connects into one of those sockets. A Bluetooth Wi-Fi module. This actually sticks onto the outside of your case. You go through the case, come out through the case, stick it on the case. This actually goes into one of those ports there. Of course, your back plate for your I.O. SLI bridge, a nice mouse pad with the Intel skull on top of it, and your desktop board manual. That's been our quick overview of the Intel D77 GA. 70k motherboard. Now, we're not done. I went ahead and ran a few benchmarks with Sandy Bridge 2600K processor. So after this is over, stay tuned and you'll see some benchmarks. Thank you. Stay thirsty, my friends. See you the next time. Bye-bye.